Afternoon, everyone. Um, so I'm going to show you this new uh, product that we're developing. There's an early access version of it that's available now, and we are uh, going to be releasing a kind of a general version uh, later this year. My story is kind of an unusual one for Google. I spent most of my career um, actually as a writer, writing nonfiction books with a lot of research. Um, I've written about a whole range of different topics, everything from the history of piracy to video games to neuroscience. But one of the common threads that runs throughout everything I've done has been this fascination with what the great writer Howard Rheingold once called tools for thought, right? That software that helps us augment our thinking, helps us research more effectively, helps us organize our ideas, basically partnering with the machine to create more interesting content, do better research, um, working in, in a kind of collaboration with software uh, as we do this stuff. A couple of years ago, about a year and a half ago, um, some folks at Google Labs uh, reached out and said, listen, because of these new language models, we have an opportunity now to create these, a new generation of tools for thoughts, the, the kind of software that you've been dreaming of your, your whole professional career, Stephen. And you should come and help us develop this from the, from the beginning. This is this process of, of co-creation that Google Labs is doing a lot of. You'll hear about it a little bit later. And so I came in and joined the team. We've created this thing called Notebook LM. And I'm going to show you a little bit of it, um, but we've had just some nice kind of early press about it. Um, there's some, some nice enthusiasm, um, but it's still very early days. But I, I want to just explain a couple of things about how Notebook LM works. The first is this concept of what we call source grounding. And so while there is an AI, there's a language model built into Notebook LM, and almost everything you do with the software is in some way working with this language model. Everything that you do in conversation with that model is grounded in the documents you give it. So if you're a student and you've got your syllabus, you've got all your reading, you upload that reading to Notebook LM, and then the second you upload it, it's as if the AI has become an expert in that entire reading list. And, and everything you converse with, the, everything, all the conversations you have with the model is grounded in, in those documents. And that creates the opportunity for a new kind of what we call conversational learning. So you're able to explore complex documents, explore complex syllabus, do research through dialogue. Um, which is a very powerful way to do it. I mean, in, in the past, if you wanted to have a conversation with a book, you could maybe find the author and talk to the author. You could maybe find someone who was an expert in the material in the book and have a conversation with them. Now we can actually have conversations with documents in a way because of AI. So I'm going to show you a, a case study of this at work. Um, one of the things that I've done over the course of my career, which is uh, part of my Tools for Thought obsession, is that I've been collecting digital quotes from books that I've read over the years. So I have a collection of 7,000 quotes dating back about 25 years of, of research from all the books that I've read and magazine articles I've read, um, just to kind of capturing my reading history. And now, in Notebook LM, I'm able to load that entire history into a single notebook um, and actually have a conversation with 25 years of quotes that have been inspired me. It's 1.3 million words worth of quotes just loaded into a single notebook inside of Notebook LM. So I'll give you a sense of how this works in the, in the software. So this is the opening question that I gave it. I just asked, you know, kind of for trends in life expectancy. And it summarizes a bunch of different kind of responses from different authors. And it gives me citations so that I can see the original quotes. So it's both summarizing, explaining, and also showing me the original source material so I can verify the quotes or get to the original source if I want it. And then it gives me a bunch of suggested questions at the bottom. So whenever I ask something, it suggests three more questions based on what I've just been talking about with the model and on the content of my, of my sources. So it gives me a good answer here. It summarizes a bunch of interesting things. It gives me six citations here. But then I can ask any question I want. So uh, I could ask something like, surprising facts about ant colonies. And one of the things that's amazing about the models these days is that you can, you can ask them for surprising information, that it has a concept of like what's surprising and what's not. And so it brings back a bunch of interesting observations about ant colonies from a, a number of different works that summarize it. And then I can, 
I can do things that aren't just based on um, question and answer format. So I can ask for, for instance, a glossary of key terms related to ant colonies. Maybe I'm preparing for a test and I want to know what the key words are. It comes back with a nice, tidy summary based, again, on the content of my sources. Um, I can continue to ask questions. I can click on the suggested questions. But the other thing that's really important here is that there are limits. And so if information is actually not in my sources, if I try and ask the model for something that's not defined by the collection of documents I've given it, it will come back and, and, and tell me that. It won't just make, make up an answer. It won't just kind of riff on its own. And so if I ask, what are some of Taylor Swift's best songs? Well, it turns out there's nothing in my sources about Taylor Swift's best songs. And so it will politely decline to answer the question. It'll say the sources don't have enough information to be helpful. So this is the, the current early access pro uh, product that we have out there now that you can experiment with it if, if you sign up for it. Uh, we are building a much more fully realized product that actually allows you to do a lot of note taking and, and basically creates what we call this kind of mixed use single surface where you can go from reading to note taking and thinking to beginning to write all in the same application. And the other thing we're really interested here is the power of curating and creating, where you create a bunch of notes through your work, and then you ask the AI to help you organize those notes and turn them into something useful. So I'll give you a glimpse of this. This is what's coming. Um, in this case, imagine you're a student. There's a lot to see here. I'm going to go through it really quickly because we don't have a lot of time. Um, but you're a student in a class in American history, and you are uh, preparing to kind of put together some ideas maybe for, a um, for something about uh, uh, this is about uh, lead in the environment. So you're, you're thinking about a, a class about the kind of history of environmental pollution. And you've actually got some interviews, and you've got a, um, a scholarly paper that you're, you're working with. And so in doing this, you basically can read the paper. And if there's something in the paper that's confusing, you can click Help Me Understand. And instantly, the model will pop up and give you an explanation of the text that you've selected so that you can actually start to to kind of understand it. And then if you find that interesting, you can pin it to your noteboard there. So you're capturing that idea. And let's say you now um, want to go and you actually want to research more about this history of kind of environmental po pollution. So you look at uh, one of the suggested questions, which is about the deep water plant, lead poisoning. You get information about that. That's interesting. You might want to pin that as well. So you capture this information, or you want to uh, ask questions about the interviews you've done um, so that you can start assembling information that you might want to use perhaps for a, a screenplay or for a paper. And so you ask for um, quotes about uh, lead poisoning. You get actual summaries of the quotes, and you get um, citations that show you where the original information is in the original documents. You can go back to the document and see um, where it is. You could select that. And you can add that to your pin board. And so slowly over time, you're curating all of these ideas that you might want to use in your paper or in your screenplay or your documentary, whatever you're making. And at a certain point, you've collected a bunch of notes. And now you can select all of those notes and ask the model to do something with those notes. So you could create a study guide at this point, or you could summarize it to a single note. In this case, though, you're, maybe you're working on a script idea. And so you say, create a timeline with relevant quotes. And you capture all of that stuff, and then you're ready to start writing the final version. You send it to Docs, and you're ready to go. So it's a completely kind of new process that takes you from engaging and conversing with your documents, organizing your ideas, taking notes, and then starting to structure all your information so that you can get to your first draft faster. That's Notebook LM coming later this year. Thank you very much.